Welcome back to this week's edition of the Jack Swarbrick Show, and we are pleased to be able to welcome to our show this week Mike Elko, the new Notre Dame football defensive coordinator. He comes to South Bend after three years as the defensive coordinator and safeties coach at Wake Forest. Elko is one of only two defensive coordinators in the nation to have a unit rank in the top 40 of the football bowl subdivision in total defense over the last five years, the last three at Wake Forest, the previous two at Bowling Green. Mike, welcome to the Jack Swarbrick Show. Yeah, glad to be here. Sorry you have to uh, settle for Jack with uh, a small case J, <laughs> but we'll, we'll have a uh, good time over the next 15 minutes or so. First of all, you had to go through some quick mixed emotions here. Uh, the school that you used to work for brought their basketball team in here, and I know you know that whole staff, and uh, uh, you, you got to be pulling for the paycheck, but I know it was hard to see some of your uh, former colleagues in the Wake Forest Athletic Department go down to a tough defeat. Yeah, no, it was uh, trying to stay as neutral as I could last night. And, uh, you had keep good all seats. The, keep all the emotions inside, right? Courtside seats will uh, kind of tilt you towards Notre Dame and your rooting interest, right? But, uh, no, enjoyed it, and uh, it was a great atmosphere, great game. So you're hanging out with Coach Kelly last night. How much of it was just cheering, and how much uh, business did you talk about during the game? Uh, business during timeouts, right, cheering during the game, so a little bit of both. Talk a little bit about – your excitement for being here, and I know a week ago when we talked, you said you were excited to come here, obviously. You wouldn't have made this decision otherwise. But then you had already gotten a chance to see the guys work out a few times, and that's when you really started to get fired up. Why? Yeah, I think, I think we've got a lot of talent in this group. I do. I think we've got a lot of young talent, uh, kids that are, are uh, uh, reaching their potential this offseason, and uh, real excited to get these guys in pads this spring and kind of see what we can do with them. I think people that follow recruiting get a little obsessed with star rankings. <laughs> uh, just as an observer looking in, I've never got all that excited about it because I think if anybody ever did a complete scientific study, half of them would be correct and half of them would be incorrect. But at, at Wake Forest, you weren't necessarily getting the same athletes, or I know you weren't, that Alabama was getting and Michigan was getting or even Notre Dame was getting, and you had such great success there. You had such great success at Bowling Green. So what do you think you can do with that history of player development with the guys you get at Notre Dame? Uh, a lot, right? I think, uh, I think the sky's the limit a little bit with what we can do with this group. I think the, the nice thing is, is I think we've always done a good job of evaluating um, ourselves, going out and, and fi figuring out what we want and going and getting it. Uh, at times, uh, especially when we were at Bowling Green, a little bit when we were at Wake Forest, uh, you would find something you really like and get it poached away from you by something bigger. Uh, at Notre Dame, there's nothing bigger, right? And so as we go out and we go through our process and we identify the players that we think are the right fits or are the best players for us, uh, we can go get them and we don't have to worry about who's going to come in or who else is looking at them or, or anything like that. And then, and then obviously I think the ceiling on a lot of the kids that, that we're getting is, is higher. And so you're developing, you're developing kids into a, a, a bigger ceiling with, with more upside, and, and that's exciting too. Talk a little bit about the recruiting process that just ended because, again, at no t time did anybody at Notre Dame sugarcoat what happened <laughs> last year. Four and eight at Notre Dame is not good. Right. Uh, and then you had all of the staff turmoil. And, again, in your position, defensive guys want to know the scheme. Yeah. And they come to play a scheme, and then a new guy comes in. And yet when all was said and done, you guys secured a class that was rated as high as 11th and ahead of a lot of – Big name schools that had better years. Uh, I think it was a remarkably successful job of recruiting. From your perspective, why did you do so well in a year of turmoil at Notre Dame? Yeah, I think uh, defensively, talk specifically. I think there was a previous connection with a lot of the kids. Um, had 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 some relationship with uh, probably half of the commits on defense, and so I think that helped ease the transition a little bit. And then I think we did a good job of identifying. Uh, some kids that fit our system, fit what we were looking for uh, very early in January and, and went out and, and, and really got after it in the month of January and, and were able to close uh, with four strong commitments on signing day. And so uh, I think it was, it was a, a good job of holding together what we could through the transition and then identifying some kids that, that fit what we were looking for. Wake Forest, of course, is known to be a very good academic school. Nathan Hatch, the president, <laughs> used to be the provost for years here at Notre Dame. Do you sense some similarities between the two schools in general? Yeah, I, I, I actually talked to Coach Kelly about that a bunch, just um, managing the kids' workload, uh, uh, understanding what they go through off the field, understanding that it can't be a 100% football all of the time. 
uh, type of job, um, which I enjoy. Uh, I enjoy the challenges of that. I enjoy the kids that are attracted to Notre Dame. I enjoy coaching them. Um, and then I just think uh, it's a more cerebral group, right, which I think kind of fits my personality maybe too a little bit in some of the places I've been. So I assume the transition then actually a little easier for you than maybe at some other places. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think I'm think i very much uh, entrenched in, in what the challenges are uh, balancing academics and football. Um, Without putting on videotape uh, details that would help teams prepare for <laughs> what they're going to see next year, talk about your philosophy and try to give a hint to the fans of the kind of defense they're going to see. Yeah, we, we, we will be a defense that plays with tremendous effort and passion. Uh, I think at all times you will see a group that, that plays together and has a lot of fun doing it. Uh, we'll be a fundamentally sound group. We will tackle well. We will play physical. Uh, we will come off blocks. Uh, and then we will be disruptive, right? We will, we will create negative plays. Uh, however we got to go about doing it, we will create negative plays. We'll, we'll create tackles for loss. We'll put pressure on the quarterback. Uh, and I think we'll, we'll bring together an a exciting brand of football. Got some statistical evidence to back up what you <laughs> just said here that we'll throw in. Last season, the Demon Deacons defense ranked in the FBS top 20 in fumbles recovered third. Turnovers forced 10th. Sacks 12th. Defensive TD 17th. Red zone defense, 17th, and scoring defense, 20th. Wake Forest was one of four schools in the FBS to rank in the top 20 in turnovers for sacks and scoring defense in 2016. The other three schools, Alabama, Clemson, and Washington, all qualified for the college football playoffs. That's pretty good company. I guess they should have put us in as the fourth team. Right? I, I guess I'm, I'm going to let you be my agent. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like the defense is extremely aggressive, is it gambling aggressive or is it controlled aggressiveness? I think it's controlled aggressiveness. I think uh, uh, fundamentally nowadays you've got to uh, limit big plays. I think college offenses will, will ultimately find a way to shoot themselves in the foot if you let them more times than not. And so uh, we want to take chances when they're there. We want to be aggressive when it's there. But it's not um, haphazard. It's not coming from all different ways and, and putting ourselves at risk in doing it. As you look at the personnel you'll get to work with next year, who excites you? A lot of them. A lot of them. I, I don't like that question because I don't want to signal out and certain I guys. But, um, no, there, there is a, a core group of kids that, that I think we can really get this thing going about. And, you know, you got your familiar names, of course, right? The Drew Tranquils, the Niles Morgans, the Greer Martinis, the uh, Coney's. Um, you've got that core group of kids that's been around for a long time. And then uh, you played a ton of freshmen last year uh, who I think are, have bright futures. Pass rush is always uh, focused by the fans <laughs> and, and an issue. And there just seems to be something about uh, the personalities and, and really where they have a tendency to come from and the academic support systems they have in high school that sometimes makes it harder for high-level academic schools to get some of the elite edge rushers yeah. into school. As you look at both the personnel that you have here, what you're going to go after, but how are you going to generate that kind of pass rush to put up the kind of numbers you put up at Wake Forest? Yeah, I, I think, uh, uh, yeah, maybe we can't get the elite, elite defensive linemen, um, but the defensive linemen we get are smarter, and they have the ability to handle more. And so I think that gives us an ability to maybe schematically put them in situations to be a little better, uh, train them, to, to see and read things maybe a little better uh, and, and utilize their strengths, right? And so uh, we don't have to keep it extremely simple. We can be a little bit multiple in, in what we do and how we go about it. I bring this uh, up because I know Coach Kelly is pretty good friends with Bill Belichick. They've sure. actually played at Pebble Beach together. Uh, and, and the Patriots are known for just that. They take a bunch of people that nobody's really ever heard of. They're not superstars. Put them in positions, and they just – keep winning is it that both that attitude and understanding of the scheme that a lot of times can uh, exceed and overplay just pure athletic ability yeah I, I think one is get a group of guys who love football right because if you get a group of guys who love football they're going to put in more work than the average person and that allows them to play better than their their skill set maybe should uh, I think the other thing that that I've always admired about the Patriots, and I think is something that we try to do too. Is look at a look at a kid, look at a player, and see what he does well, and and don't focus on what he can't do, and don't focus on what he can't do in your system. Say this kid can do A, B, and C, 
and then then spend all of your time trying to figure out ways to get him to do A, B, and C and not have to do the things that he's not good at, right? And uh, maybe easier said than done all the time, but at least that philosophy uh, allows you to do it, right? Don't go in and say, this is our defense, this is what we do, and, you know, these kids can't do it. Uh, and we've never tried to approach it that way, and I think that's why we've had success over the years. When this process began to examine uh, – all across the nation, potential defensive coordinators here. Coach Kelly said the defensive coordinator would have uh, the right to choose his staff with input from Coach Kelly. Sure. And you bought Coach Lee, brought Coach Lee with you, uh, linebackers coach from Wake Forest, but you also kept a lot of the guys uh, who were here. So talk to me about the chemistry that you sense right now in your defensive staff. Yeah, excited about it. I think, uh, you know, if it's too much of same old, same old, it gets boring, right? And so – uh, I was excited to bring Coach Lee. I think he's another guy who understands Notre Dame, understands what this place is, uh, certainly has a tremendous knowledge base of our system and um, can go in and coach the linebackers and get them going from day one, right? Uh, coach Light is, is the Notre Dame story. Uh, whatever you want, you can get out of this place. So uh, first-round draft pick, NFL career, goes on in his successful afterlife and does whatever he wants to do, right? And then a tremendous amount of respect for Mike Elston and the job he did in, in, a, in a crazy situation last year and holding it together and, and have really enjoyed my time with him. In your coaching career, have you run into many folks like Todd Light? Because I haven't. <laughs> uh, I mean, he still greets me like he did when he was playing here, but, I mean, he, he's done it all. Right. National champion here, yeah. All-American, uh, Pro Bowl, Super Bowl champion, right? very successful businessman. At this point in his life, he decided, I think I'm going to go back to where I work 70 hours a week for most <laughs> of the year and, and coach football. Yeah, no, I don't think there's a lot of people like Todd Light, right? And that's the, that's the vision we try to sell of what Notre Dame can do for you. Um, you can get everything you want, whatever you want, uh, this place will offer you. And, no, Todd, Todd, Todd works like a guy who, who came up through the, the ranks like any of us. Um, but – Obviously, he's had a tremendous amount of success in his life. As you may have heard, because you got here a little early. Both football coaches get here early. That's just part of the discipline. Part of the deal, right? Of what it's part you of the do. deal. I mentioned to Coach uh, Poli, and then Coach Kelly gave you guys some time off. But of course, in football, especially coming to a new school, you're still here. It was very easy to find right. a couple of guys to come over and appear on our show. So take me through your schedule now, as you put your mark and your system into place. Uh, as we approach spring practice and then the season. Right. Well, I, I would be uh, in a lot of trouble if I didn't say it starts with getting my family moved. Uh, well, absolutely. So we're going to start with that. Um, and, then, and then I think uh, it's a combination of getting to know our players, uh, getting to know our current roster, getting to know their personalities, who they are as people, uh, getting to evaluate their skill sets so we can get them in the right position by the time spring ball rolls around. Uh, trying to install the defense, uh, which which has already started, and trying to do some position meetings with those guys and, and get things up and running, um, while at the same time uh, getting caught up on on recruiting the 2018, 2019, 2020 classes, right? Which which were behind in the 18 class, and so um, you know it's a it's a good time of year right now to to just kind of hunker into your office and go to work because there's certainly a lot of work that needs to be done well thank you for being here what I mentioned to a lot of folks I met all you guys for the first time a week ago Monday yeah and every coach obviously I knew a couple of the guys from the past but you made an immediate connection it does seem that this staff is also made up of people persons the people that like people and connect <laughs> right away yeah but that's very important collegiately is that what you're sensing with this group yeah no doubt I think you got a lot of people that understand uh, uh, how to how to interrelate with people because that's important. If if you can't well, get in you front like of these people, you yeah. like being around people. <laughs> but I mean, it, uh, I think that's really important, especially at Notre Dame, because there's a lot of people that are going to shake your hand. Yeah, no doubt. In, in future years, no doubt. And 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 it's important with your players, right? Your players have to look at you and and see a guy that they can come in and talk to. You know, this isn't. Um, you know, the thing I love about college football is 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 we're working with 18, 19, 20 year old kids that are still looking to us to help and looking at us to mold them and be there for them and, and they're going through things in their lives that are that are going through for the first time and um, that's part of it right we have to be there for them and, and have those interpersonal skills to do that all right i know you got a lot of stuff to do thank you for <laughs> taking some time to be on our show this no week. appreciate you having me all right when we come back we'll talk with one of the reasons why the notre dame swimming team is having such a good year this year right after this time out on the jack swoggin show <laughs> To go out there and to be able to lace up and play the game that I love was something that I've always dreamed about. 
It's a blessing. I just get goosebumps sometimes. You look up and you just see, you know, thousands of people in the stands cheering you on. Playing for my brothers, man. It's time to show it now. Everybody's looking. Yeah.